So I'm gonna run this into thousands and thousands of starts. That's going to be expensive. I can use connect by to get the standard hierarchical listing from my table, but how can I get a count for each row of all the subordinates under each entry in the hierarchy? Uh, this is a, a straight SQL question, but it covers some interesting concepts in the, uh, our Oracle SQL knowledge, so I thought I'd give it to you tonight as well. Let's use the time-honored classic hierarchy, Scott.emp table, or just the emp table in my local schema here. We start with a point in the hierarchy. We have a definition of how we're going to get from one entry in the hierarchy to the next, to the child or the parent, depending on which way we're traversing it. We have the level pseudo column, which lets us know how deep in the hierarchy we are. So if I use some padding, I get this lovely picture of my hierarchy. And that works just fine. Connect by, believe it or not, was even in the very first version of the Oracle database. So even along with select came connect by way back in Oracle version two. That's how old that facility is. I want to be able to put a hierarchy count next to each person. So 13 people report to King because he's the CEO and there's it's 14 people in total. So 13 people must report to him. What do we got? Uh, one, two, three, four people must report to Jones, etc. Now I could do it this way with a scalar select, which is here's my hierarchy as before, which gives me all the results. For each row, because I'm doing this sub select, not as a join, but actually as a scalar select, it's a select in the select cores or the, the list of columns. For each row, run a count star doing the same hierarchical traversal. So in this case, I'll, on this row, I'll start with King, traverse the hierarchy and find that he's got 13 people. Then I get to Jones, traverse the hierarchy, find that he's got four people and so on. People at the very bottom of the hierarchy have no subordinates. And that works, that works fine. But if I do gather planned statistics on that query to see how expensive is it, when we look at the execution plan for that cursor, the key thing to look at here is the starts column. I scan the employee table once to do my first connect by, to give you my base hierarchy. But when I got those 14 rows, then for every row that came back, I ran the same query again to start from that particular person and drive into the hierarchy. You can see the starts here. I ran that scalar query 14 times, once for every single row, which means if I have 10,000 employees, I'll be running that query 10,000 times and so forth. Sometimes scalar querying can get some caching, but by definition here, every single row of the hierarchy is a different set of rows or different evaluation. So I'm gonna run this into thousands and thousands of starts. That's going to be expensive. Maybe I can avoid scalar queries by using some of the cool stuff that came in later versions of Oracle in terms of joins, in this case, for example, lateral. What lateral lets me do is reference entries in the outer table in my join table as if they were correlated, like correlated subqueries. So in this case, I'm starting with the employee table as before to get my base level hierarchy using the standard connect by. Then I'm using a lateral to do a select count by, but lateral lets me reference columns across the two join tables. So in this case, I can, even though it's a join, I can say, yep, grab this element from the other table in the join. That's what lateral lets me do. And I get the same result. Is it better from an execution perspective? Because now it's just one join to another join. If I do gather plan statistics to see what the results are, unfortunately, uh, no. Yes, we did the one start through the employee table, but as you can see, we ended up doing a whole stack of starts through different levels of the hierarchy. So lateral works, but we didn't really get a performance benefit. It's blazingly fast with 14 rows. It won't be blazingly fast with 40 million rows. I was trying to tackle this from a different perspective, which is if I can start with the rows like this, my base level hierarchy, and have a way of always bringing them out in this particular order, order siblings gives me this much, but if I'm going to have this as sort of some raw data to use some, uh, some additional work to try work out the count, I want to be able to produce the results back in this order again, even though I've lost the connect by when I use this later down the track. So I added a row number sequence just using the row num. That gives me the hierarchy now, plus this nice unique ascending number, which I can use for ordering later on. Now, if I look at that result, how do I work out the count? Given a particular entry in the hierarchy, 
The definition of count is I keep looking down levels while the level number is higher than the one I'm currently on. So if I start at level N, which is in this case level two, I keep traversing this hierarchy in this order until I hit another two. So as long as it's greater than two, I know that person's a subordinate, that's a subordinate, that's a subordinate, and so forth. That gives me a count of four. These are the rules I need to apply. For every time I start at a particular level, keep looking down the rows until I get to the level, or in fact, while the level is greater than the value of two. That there is establishing a pattern, a pattern by which I can apply to these rows. And if I have rows and I have patterns, then of course I have pattern matching queries. So as I said, here's my raw data, that, is, that data we just saw, the hierarchy with a row num added to give me some sequencing. Then I'm going to use some pattern matching. And what the pattern I said, we start at a particular level, doesn't matter what level we start at, so it can be anything. And then I have an arbitrary number of higher levels. And the definition of higher level, as the name suggests, is the level I'm on is greater than the level I started with, as we saw in the previous slide. If I start with two, I keep going until I get to a number, or I keep going while there is a number greater than two. I've left out the measures here. I just wanted to focus on the pattern and the rules here. Now I need to add some measures. The measures are, each time I hit a starting level, in this case, a level at someone two, I'm gonna print out that, print out their name, print out their employee number. And then what I do, the only thing I need to add is the count of all the people that had a higher level underneath. And that's going to give me my subordinate count. So if I run that, it works. Fantastic. King has 13 reports. Now I seem to be missing something here, as you can imagine. And what pattern matching does by default is it says, yep, start with the row name King. His level is one. The rule was keep going while the level is greater than one. Yep, yep, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay, we're done. Now we start the next from this position here. Oh, we've done. We finished the whole table. The pattern matching is completed. And that's why we only got the one row, which obviously isn't the result we're after. But pattern matching lets us do this clause as well, which is it doesn't matter how far I scanned ahead to fill the pattern. When I finish filling the pattern, go back to the next row from the one I just started with. So I add that clause and there we go. There's my subordinate count using pattern matching, not using scalar queries or lateral. That's all well and good as an exercise in SQL, but is it more performant? Let's throw our gather land statistics hint on there and see what happened. How many starts do we have? One scan through the table. And all the rest was done with the magic of pattern matching. So yes, pattern matching will obviously burn some CPU, but one thing it's going to do is give you one pass through the table, no matter what the size is. We can infer that hopefully from this small example. So pattern matching is one of those great facilities where it can be applied not just to, I'd say, let's call it all the cliched patterns that we think about. There's always opportunities there to find patterns in the standard business rules that we come up with in our databases. <laughs>